Um, so what's up with drape face? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is the best video ever. <laughs> Jason Morrison. Does everybody know about all that like no. syndicate? Do you want to hear about that story? No, oh man. No one knows any of that stuff. Jake uh, told me to say that to you on stream. So Let me all right, everybody, what up? Welcome in today. I have an amazing Kendama legend, someone who's been playing just about as long as I have, who traveled with me around the world in the beginning days of Kendama, and uh, Kendama helped shape what he does today. So I'm very excited to talk to the one, the only, TJ Kolsnick. What's up, what up dude? What up, what up? Uh <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's. it's it's amazing to be here. I, I, I've been following Kendama for such a long time now, and I still keep up with so much stuff. So it's been amazing to see what you've been doing with the Kendama community and what every other company has been doing. It's, it's amazing that, that you guys are just pushing along and continuing to do this thing. Dude, so much new media to try to push Kendama through. You know, it's not just YouTube videos and comments like back in the day when we were communicating, right, in the beginning. It's like a, it's a thread with every person I talk to is like, Dude, all we had to do was make like edits, and that was our only goal always was to just go somewhere, make a sick edit, and we would we'd have months to edit it. It would be fine, but now it's like every day you need a, a recap, and every week you need a sick reel about the week, and then you know, like we have so many things. It's uh, it's just crazy. I I agree with you. It's just the fact of the progression of social media and not only in tricks as well like i'm seeing people do tricks that i had no i didn't even think were possible and i'm back here thinking of like when we're i'm sitting in like kg roots with jake just doing like motion comic i'm like now people are doing tightrope flips are you serious dude so do you That's actively sick. follow a lot of kendama players still like do you actively hit follow on newer players and watch new stuff some sometimes like i i play kendama every day i have so many kendamas in my office like i sit here when i'm like on calls or whatever i'm sitting here playing kendama i go out to my patio i'm like i need to get away from my computer and my clients like i'm gonna go jam some dama you know it's always that's always been what kendama is about to me is get outside go do something and like get away from technology Dude. but to answer your question yes i keep up with a lot of stuff i see everything going on like 20 tricks uh later or 20 tricks 28 <laughs> tricks later jesus can't you can't you. miss it dude I'm, you can't miss kendama <laughs> this month it's insane yeah but back to the whole like progression of social media like you have to do so much video content and daily basically not only stories but twitch and tiktok and youtube and shorts and there's all these places that you have to post it. And it's so cool that I still see so much stuff on a daily basis of what people are, are, are posting and doing tricks about. Yeah, dude. And I know that's a lot of stuff that you do today too with your company, but I want to start at the beginning of Kendama and like go back to some nostalgic days of when you started playing and stuff. Cause uh, you know, you're part of my story growing up, you know, like Turner was a huge, uh, like inspiration to me. And so to me, you were like Turner 2.0 when you came on the scene, like you were his homie and you were like, you had the same style and you were like, obviously you played Kendama with him. So you could do like all the hard, cool tricks that he could do and stuff. And, uh, that was like, your style is something that I always looked up to in Kendama and, in just like the way you dress and stuff, which was uh, part of the saga story, dude. And that, oh, look at that hoodie. <laughs> just flexing <laughs> his own gear, dude. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm, working on this, I'm working on this merch line right now and I'm about to drop it. So I'm like really Dang, it. dude. It looks yeah. epic. Honestly, that's so Thank sick. You. Dude, yeah, I wear. It's I, like over. Oh. No, okay. go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, it's just this like overweight baggy fit like Jake Jake Fisher actually commented on my Instagram he's like bring like tall T teach back <laughs> so I, I I got some stuff I got some stuff coming out I love it <laughs> oh dude well we're here to support the, the Kendama community has got your back uh, but like I, I wear I bought a long hoodie that I wear and tag you every time I do like the last trick I did for 20 tricks later I was wearing it outside of this cottage because like it brings a nostalgia to me that is epic and I really do love it. But um, it started with Saga and it started, which is a company that I think helped shape your Kendama story in the beginning. So enough of me talking. I want to hear like how you got into it and tell a little bit of the TJ story. 
from the jump. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, man, it's been it's been a while. I, I initially like hurt my foot skiing in high school. This was back in twenty ten. So this is when Kandama really wasn't a thing. Like Turner Thorne, Colin Sanders, Zach Yord, like those were the those are the guys. Mm-hmm. And luckily, I I lived in the same area as, as Turner. We lived right up the street from each other in Lake Tahoe. So I got put onto Kandama, and I was like, damn, this thing is fun. Like I'm gonna just get really good at this thing, and that's what I was doing. Like we're, I worked as a ski rental, like jet jet ski rental operator, and a parasol deck camp, and I'd bring a Kandama out on the beach and just like jam with it and start coming up with new tricks. <laughs> and this was on like a trib this is on like a tribute shape that Jero dropped and it was like this slick kendama, but it was dope. I remember it was a lavender tribute. And like Ooh. all this stuff was happening. this all this stuff was happening and um I just was so addicted to Kendama for like a year straight. And that's when you know, Turner and I would hang out almost every day. We'd go film. We had like the version one GoPro and we'd go set it up at night. And like I have all those videos, like <laughs> no I way. go back and reminisce. Yeah, I go back and reminisce on all those videos because I'm oh, like, gosh. it was such a cool, it was such a cool time in my life. If that has shaped me who I am today, yeah. And it's just been, it's been this whole thing. So like, what year was that? What what version. year was it? What year was like when you were hanging with Turner mm-hmm. and like, is it him being like super famous pro status? Like it's him being at his peak, right? Like, is when, yeah, you, or uh, is he still coming up to that? It was still coming up to that. So yeah. when I got into Kendama, the next year was like when the Kusa Pro uh, announcement came out. So that's when like everybody submitted videos. Uh, Damien Clavin, me, like all these people, right? So we're talking Dave 2011 Mateo, or yeah, 20... Yeah, this is when they're... Yeah, yeah. We're, we were looking for the new Kendama USA Pro for 2011. Yeah, dang. Okay, cool. I just or had to figure out what year it was. That's things. Yeah, got it. Yeah. It was one of those two years, but then that's when Alex Smith became pro. And oh. Kanami USA was like, hey, you guys are dope. Me, Jake, Keith, and Dave. Mm. Yo, do you guys want to be on Tribute Team? And then we dropped that banger video that Jake made. With, Dang. Uh, yeah. And so you, I was wondering, so you four, yeah, you four got added as like a secondary squad or whatever, for lack of a better term. You're the newbies, essentially. Like, Yeah. I, I would say like the amateur team, you know, yeah, the yeah. pro and am. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I didn't really know what that meant at the time. I just got out of high school. I did. I wanted to be a pro skier. I hurt myself. I picked up a Kendama. I was going down to Turner and I would like take a Subi down to San Francisco and go kick it with Jake and Colin and like see Mugens and like all this stuff. <laughs> fast, fast forward. Now we're doing, you know, tight rip, tight rope. <laughs> 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 but I'll I'll talk a little bit more about that, like yeah. that, that where that journey was from, like tribute. Because once we got announced a tribute, we flew out to the New York Toy Fair, and it was like paradise for me being 19 years old. I was like, cool, I can play with a ball and cup and travel the world with homies and do like dope shit and be like just having the best time. Mm-hmm. And at that age, I'm 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 thinking like, Jeremy, why the hell did you ever let all these dudes just come <laughs> into the Kendama scene and? do what we did but like that <laughs> that one thing is like culture to me we shaped almost the culture of what kendama is because not myself like wholeheartedly the ogs in kendama and I'll, i'm talking from like sander colin sander to to jeremy to turner to zach to you to christian to royce to all these people that we looked up to uh mm-hmm. that's what shaped the culture of kendama and so to me there was these phases of it it was like colin turner zach were like the og hot hot shots and then the rise of the kendama scene in 2015 in san diego was like when i got put on the spot i was bouncing around all over san diego doing birthdays events doing yeah. whatever i could to just like <laughs> Dude, make talk, some of, dough, make some talk about the yeah. birthdays more i forgot like you literally were Dude. gigging one whole summer like you made more money doing that than selling damas i probably uh, like at that at that time i was thinking like okay i could hustle my way into this and people want to see me and they want to like play kendama with me and i can also be an inspiration to kids which is why the you know pro model video that i i announced i had those kids in there because they just made they transformed my life of who i am today even though it was back then in 2016. yeah yeah but back to the whole back to the whole story of i was just traveling around and grinding and pushing kendama in san diego and i saw this opportunity so i was like okay let's go to this store let's go to this let's go to that and funny thing to think about is uh an owner of a agency here in san diego he was a co-owner of the agency i met him 
at this birthday event that I went to that Chris Cole was at the skateboarder. No And way. I walk in and I, I walk in, I'm just like, holy shit, that's Chris Cole. And his his kids coming up to me and be like, TJ, can I have your autograph? I'm like, wait, uh, can I? Can I have your dad's crazy. autograph, Cause, please? <laughs> well, because I remember being at the in the KG Roots, the second KG Roots tour. We were driving up to Oregon, and Jordan and I were like drinking some fat tires in the back, playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, uh, like in the van, and we were like Chris Cole. So it just like this nostalgia thing happened where I'm like this connected this dot so there's some synergy there of like why i met this person dang him and then the 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 reason i'm saying this is because uh the agency owner is uh, a good friend of mine so like all of this synergy happened but that was wow. six seven years ago you know so that is here. like part of your so so when we talk about your business later on literally it's these connections you made via doing kadama birthday parties in san diego that like help shape the connections that you made, which is, it's literally networking, right? Like it's the, mm -hmm. the, what was the, what's the saying? Like, it's not about who you, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And that's one of those, exactly. those moments where like you could go to school for a million years and it wouldn't get you into that birthday party to meet those homies. Like life is weird exactly. in those ways, dude. And you got to flow with it, like the water and, and, and go where it takes you. So that's super, that's so crazy. So, uh, yeah. I want to say the, you said KG Roots Tour and I had in my notes here KG Roots Tour because to me you were like with Jake you were the hype dude of the tour like you were the guy throwing <laughs> things out you were the guy like being the party if for say. lack of a better term dude <laughs> like when we showed up so I was wondering if you could give me like a you know maybe a story that's uh, give me a story from either the first or second or you know that it can be we have a bunch of you know uh adults in the chat for the most part and if you know we can uh, dope. Okay, i cool. want to hear a cool st we want to hear something that we might not have heard on a different you know something or another um man uh the one like vague memory i have or like it's a faint memory of uh that pluto hotel we stayed at remember mm -hmm. and we were like we we're fucking like throwing mattresses out and jumping off the balcony and some homie like broke his shoulder or some shit. Yord was the one like, wasn't he a big part uh, of orchestrating then, that? Yeah. So me and Yord were always like, okay, let's just do some like fucked up shit. Not in a bad way, but like, <laughs> let's just like, let's just create some havoc. Like that's mm -hmm. just who Yord and I were together. We were like the twins. When we had 19. the same shorts on. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were living a cool life. We're like, cool. We're playing ball and cup. We're traveling around. We're like drinking beers. Like, okay, this is cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that memory is good because also Zach got on the roof of the hotel and flipped off of it into the pool. And Matt Rice got a photo of this, and I think it's still on his Instagram. We should find it. Oh. But it's I don't know I don't know if it's Zach like completely upside down or if he's just jumping. But it's basically him in the air over a pool, just waiting to go in. Yeah, and that was just what we did. We just we. We almost adopted the rollerblading scene of how we like rollerblading yeah. skate, like all of that stuff. I remember like three, I remember three king beds being in a hotel room, and we're all just like crammed in there. But it was the best time. So it was all the homies, yeah, we're all playing dama, staying up till six a.m. like just still shredding dom. Yeah, dude. Well, we were young enough too, where mm -hmm. like you don't hurt, you don't feel sore the next day. Like that's just exactly. what you're doing. You're just grinding until the sun comes up. And you're like, oh, okay, I guess we gotta sleep. But you guys had to like the, you guys slept for two hours and oh there was some i think it was jake maybe that we reminisced about we we watched you sleeping on the lawn of a holiday yeah, or that's something because you was about to get to yeah because you couldn't get in the hotel so you guys literally took blankets and pillows and went and slept on the front lawn of the hotel and then went and hung out with a a park full of kids later that day and played unicorn battles yeah. like actually well, all the unhinged the rest of the boys, we had like, I think that was Ballard, Keith, Matt, Dave, Mateo, me, Alex Smith. We were all packed in that van, but I think Yord, myself, and Colin all went outside to just sleep outside because I had a sleeping bag and I was like, cool, I'll just sleep on the, I'll lit we literally slept on the lawn. Like we woke up <laughs> and people were walking on the sidewalks. We're like, Yep, we just slept here. Oh, yeah, chat remembers the story. It must have been Colin who told it because he remembers it like yeah. yesterday too. 
<laughs> it's all on video too. We got to pull it up. It's in the video file somewhere. But then two hours later, we go just shredding for kids, and I'm just like, "What up, it's your boy Pete? Let's get after it!" <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! So like, aside from the aside from those like KG Roots tours that were like, I think really important for Kendama in the beginning to provide that feeling of this isn't yo-yo this isn't like your you know whatever kind of toy this is a sick fun thing that we're doing was the trips to Hawaii and I think that yes. came soon either it was right before California or after but either way it's where the Weens and Fueg show came from and like uh me and Max were there with you guys like all the time in so many different places. But I, I know that you went to Hawaii just as much as me. So I was wondering if you could just touch on like what Hawaii was like as TJ back in the day, like going there for the first time. Cause I think you were in high school still, right? Like that wasn't post, oh, was it? I, I was out of high school by then. So oh, this okay. had to have been in, yeah, this was like 20, I want to say 2015. So this yeah. is when I was like 22, 23 years old. Okay. Got you. Got you. Like the prime of my travels of Kendama was like when I moved back down to San Diego, it was like the 2015 start of like me just traveling like crazy. Got it. Yeah, we were traveling here and there and like still building the Kendama scene. Mm -hmm. But once San Diego hit, it was like, okay, now all these other cities are popping off. Yeah, San Francisco was doing something and wh whoever else was doing stuff. But then Hawaii emerged and it was like, whoa, we first flew out there. I think I was, again, like 22, 23. And we stay at the Koalina Resort. And I, being 22 years old, going to this dope-ass resort in Hawaii, about to, like, go sign autographs and play Kendama for kids, it was unreal. I I, I can't even tell you how I felt then because it was just such a moment that I just took in with the team. Haley was there. Dave was there. Uh, we brought the rest of the squad out there the next time. Mm -hmm. But within a course of three months, I went four times. And yeah. that first time we walked up on stage and there's thousands of kids screaming. I can't even like there's video footage of it. Yeah. Thousands and thousands and thousands of kids. We would go anywhere in Hawaii and we would just post a photo on Instagram and there would be somebody that knew us or we'd be, I remember doing this giveaway thing where we're like, yo, let's just post a photo and see what happens. And then a kid would get there within five minutes and get it. Yeah, and it was just time. like, damn, this is so cool. So then from there, we kept going back to Hawaii to do promotional events to fly to Maui for one day. I remember Jake and I, Jake, myself, and Dave just flew to Maui one time. And we did this event, and then we just got on mopeds the rest of the day and just, like, cruised <laughs> around, had a good time, and then flew back to Oahu to do another event. Yeah. So the Kind as much fun as it was, and why I'm saying this, like, there's so many grind hours that we put in. Just me being young, I was all about it, but, like, I don't know how Jake kept up with me. Like he was <laughs> almost eight years older than me, but I think I kept him young. Dude. But just the energy, the energy, the people, the kids, the love, the emotion, all of those things kept us going each day. Mm -hmm. Plus all the filming, all the all the things that we could showcase of why Kendama is so important in the world. Well, that's the key, I think. And what, you know, maybe I was getting to, because I was in Hawaii all those times too, and it would truly was like, an experience like we we probably will never experience that again unless you want to get professional no. on something else or unless Kendama blows to the moon like we may never feel that feeling <laughs> like because it's not something you can recreate and not something you can ever like like signing one Kendama is is a really cool feeling but to sit behind a table and have 600 kids waiting in line for the whole afternoon that's like a whole other can of worms that is kind of just like we, you had security guards like it was I'm trying to, and I only bring this up because I try to paint a picture to everyone in chat because now Kendama is 21 year old and up essentially is like the main people mm -hmm. pushing Kendama really hard right now and kids play along the way but it's not like it was when, when we started where we were the 21 year olds influencing the 13 year olds to play a ton you know and that's mm -hmm. why I just want to just so chat knows like this is a this is kids. This is 13 year olds who like traveled yeah. the islands to come to these one malls. And it, it, and it shaped a lot of stuff. And for you, it was like, if um, correct me if I'm wrong, obviously, but like you and Jake got really close during those trips because not everyone went every time. It was everyone went, but then sometimes it was you and Jake maybe went to an island or you and Jake went on a special trip. And uh, I remember clearly like you wanting to learn from Jake, like and Jake wanting to teach you so that 
he had help so that he had so he didn't have to body every single edit of every single trip and like it seemed like this perfect match of someone who's wanting to learn and someone who's willing to like you know teach because jake is we have as we know like uh, he's an inspiration to a lot of us in that realm so what was it like having him as kind of like a, a mentor starting out in that yeah, absolutely. First things, like, I would not be where I'm at without Jake. He shaped who I am with uh, photography and video and taught me to look at life and look at Kandam in a different lens, which is why we got connected so well. And we're just on the same level of, like, energy-wise, too. Yeah. Um, but the the first KG Roots tours that I went to and then, of first you know, a couple events here and there and going down to San Diego and uh, all these all these interactions I had with Jake it just made us closer and closer. And then we'd go to Hawaii together, or we'd go to some place together, just us. And it's like we're just vibing together. I mean, he's the one who got me to wear fedoras. It was my fedora <laughs> phase. Everybody loves that. <laughs> Can't wait for those photos to be brought back up. I still have those fedoras too. Oh, that's anyway, sick. Uh, yeah, with with hanging out with Jake more, like he kept showing me how to do things, and I just adopted or adapted to what he would tell me. You know, I never went to school for video editing. I never went to school for any of these things. Mm -hmm. It's like I learned by process, and I learned by failure, and I learned by people that I surrounded myself with. When you're around somebody, you can you know understand what they're doing, but it's all in you if you want to take that next step. So what I did was like, okay, Jake's teaching me this, that, and this. He's filming all these things for Konami USA. He learned from Colin. I learned from Colin. Colin shoots amazing stuff. How can I be that next person to step in to help Jake? And that's kind of where it went. But then we had all these other side tasks, like Weems and Twigs show was just us raw in the moment with our GoPro. Like, here's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. We don't sleep very much. We drink coffee. We act silly. We sign autographs. We have fun with kids, and we do ridiculous stuff. And those moments were... I can't, I can't, I can't explain to you those moments because there's just something that Jake and I had such a good bond with mm -hmm. and has shaped me to who I am today. Dang, that's, that's very so. cool. And it's, and I think it's cool to everyone in chat to know that like you didn't go to school for any of that. Like you just saw someone doing it and you're like, well, I can do that. Let me get those things. And you had Jake to learn from, but anyone can learn from anyone. Cooper learned from YouTube, you know, along with people along the way, but like, it's the drive inside and like that want to to persevere that really pushes it. And we are all lucky enough to have Kendama as this thing to photograph and to take video of and to be creative with because uh, a lot of people don't even have that. They just got to go out in the world and figure out what to shoot. But we are given this this tool, you know, that that can help spread joy. And oh, dude, it's so sick. Yeah, dude, look at all those. Is that your so what <laughs> is that your first one? Uh, no, this is my second one. Oh, okay. Yeah, hold on. Let me show that. Yeah, that's there. I have them. Um, where are they? I actually have a few here. I usually I usually have these on display just because I have them. So yeah. this is like, the, this was the first model. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of because that's the one you did a gold flake variant of, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. and the, the cool thing is like every, it says make waves right there. Dude, you were, you were putting so, on. How many years ago was that? Yeah. This was 2016. This launched 2016. Jeez, yeah. Eight years ago, you yeah. manifested that, dude. Yeah. yeah. And then this one, too. This one's got the make waves down here. Dude. Yeah, in the script. And then this is the second one. This one launched in 2018. And this was on Valentine's Day, actually, 2018. I was in New York. I remember launching this and being in an Uber and doing a live stream, being like, yo, my mod's out. But then this is also when I was going through like a really bad heartbreak with my girlfriend. So I was like happy and <laughs> oh, not happy. Yeah. And I couldn't tell anybody how I was feeling. I'm like, fuck, <sighs> this sucks, but I love this. I love everybody. And that kind of kept me pushing too. Yeah, dude. I mean, designing Kendama, yeah. isn't it crazy how you can attach so many different memories to the time and place when you were making those or, or when you got it? It's Or the, for me, the edits that I make going through that process is such a big thing. Like, was your first edit like one, what was, so what was the first video you made for Kendama USA was, was my question. Like oh, that you man. were like, I'm in charge, like I got to do good on this, everyone's, you know, going to watch it and... That was the, uh, I want to say that was like the Euro tour video. It was like the first stab I had at putting together a whole tour video by myself. 
Dang. There was like times when I would, there were, there was times when I'd help shoot things like when we'd go to Japan or when we need to shoot Dave or myself or Alex or whoever it was, like we would do that. But mm -hmm. I think the, Euro, I think Euro tour from start to finish, like a conceptualized shot, edited, cut and delivered. Dang. That's dope. And what year was that? Yeah. Uh, I want to say that's 20, I want to say it's 2017. Yeah, we went to Sweden for a, a week, and we went to Romania, <sighs> dude. That was wild, bro. Romania was that a was sick crazy. place, bro. Tell me a Romania story. <laughs> oh. Let me let me let me let me backtrack. Because, yeah, like the the 2015 phase of San Diego, like that's when I felt like I put myself on the mark, where I was like, I'm going after this. Like mm -hmm. I'm doing all these events. I'm getting some social clout. I I want to take that next step to be a Kandama player or a professional Kandama player. Yeah. Even though I felt like I was, like I wasn't saying I was, but in that spotlight, it's like, okay, TJ's a pro Kandama player in San Diego, but I'm not really a pro. So at that time, there was like this like overlap. Yeah. But all in all, it's like we were promoting, we were pushing Kandama for the betterment of joy and to, you know, get something in the kids' hands or the people's hands. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. But, um, you know, once once all that happened over a span of a year i was traveling to japan i was traveling to all these places just because i needed to play kendama i was doing stuff with kit corporation i flew to japan four times oh. in one year just to do trade shows and so i was out there that dude like, loved you so ex much <laughs> ex expected 22 a fresh 22 year old who's gone to japan a few times because the world's corrupt and now i'm just out there by myself in a, in a in a corvette and eating some delicious food and hanging around with a dude that's 40 years older than me and i'm loving it <laughs> It was fucking sick, dude. We're just <laughs> Those mobbing. Those stories are so funny. Oh. Yeah. So, like, that happened. And then I I started getting the whole pro model thing announcement prepared for. So I was filming, doing this, that, this, that. And then that happened. And then immediately when I launched the pro model, like, people were stoked. It was, like, such a meaningful video and piece to me that Jake directed and cut, like, still on YouTube, one of my favorite videos I go back to. Mm-hmm. Once that happened, we launched the Make Waves World Tour, and that's when I went on a six-week world tour to four countries and 19 cities in the span of six weeks and just promoted Kendama in my pro model. Damn, and that's how many that places was, you went? Yeah, in six weeks. Wow. And I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody else has done like a tour like that or that's in the space of, of that sense. Yeah, that's a and lot. And it was, it was hard. It was, it was hard at that age. But I also learned so much. Like again, why I am how I am and who I am today is because of those hard times. Yeah, my failures make me who I am, and that's why I strive to be a hundred one percent better every day. Yeah, dude. And you've and traveling. I mean, you you work working on the go is the number one thing that like I see Jake doing, and it has obviously instilled in you is that you're always editing, no matter where you are. It doesn't matter your computer. <laughs> you can you can always edit. And so you've you you've traveled a lot. You've been a lot of places. Can you, what's your favorite place? Like where, favorite place, if you could travel back to any place you've been, where do you, where would you go back to? Even if Are you've you been back there. Are you saying Kendama side or like where uh, I am now? I, I just say. Or can I give you both? Let yeah, me, let me yeah, give, give me, me, me just give as both. a traveled human, I, like yeah. what do you think's the coolest, you know? For sure, for sure. The cool thing is about my traveling now is I have a little bit more money. I have a little bit more stability in what I'm doing. So it's a little bit of a different experience. Yeah. But in the, in the Kandama days, it was like, damn, my travels were paid for. You know, hotels were paid for. I was getting a bit, little bit payments here and there. And it's like, damn, this is so cool. I want to I wanna experience this as long as I can. Mm -hmm. um, but probably the top place will always really be Japan for me just because of the sentimental value it has to me. Yeah. Um, in, in the Kendama world, like that's such a big impact of why I was able to do so much. So that's a big thing for me. Give now, me a, today, like, well, okay. one sec. Sorry. Sorry. Give me a, well, cause I love Japan. I've been there 16 times. So tell me your favorite place in Japan. Cause there's lots of Japan. Shibuya. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So just straight Shibuya. That's a good answer. That's usually my answer as well. I love Shibuya for the sense of like fashion and like that style, like Japanese style. And yeah. I saw Nobu like a few months ago, actually, I was in Japan. Oh, cool. So I got to have some, yeah, we chose Biru Kampai. It, <laughs> it was a yabai time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chosegoi. Uh, 
Yeah, but Shibuya, that's amazing. Uh, like Hokkaido or like Matsumoto. I actually went there with uh, Torque Hill one time to do some promo thing with Chrome and uh, Konami USA. Yeah. And we went to this like authentic soba noodle house and it was dumping snow. It was so fucking sick. <sighs> so and beautiful. Matsumoto, like that specifically, like I want to go to Matsumoto just to have soba. <laughs> so now fast, fast forward to my life now. I've been able to travel to so many different places. Like I love Europe. I love Portugal. I'm actually looking to maybe get property out there at some point. Cool. Um, Europe, Europe in general is just a nostalgia vibe to me and it brings memories to me and I'm Italian and I love photography and there's just a lot of sentimental value there. Mm -hmm. Uh, but to, to my point, I feel like I've traveled to so many countries that I know specifically where I want to go to for that experience, i.e., oh, I want to go to Matsumoto or Hokkaido to go skiing and also like have authentic soba mm -hmm. and just reconnect with myself. Or go to Hawaii and chill or whatever. So I kind of tie experiences to the places that I go to. Um, but as of now, I really, really enjoy Europe. It's very my speed of pace. I, I, I love being out there to just slow down a little bit and not live this kind of fast-paced life that I do in San Diego all the time. Yeah. Dude, that's so dope. That sounds... So nice. Hawaii is like always my place I go back to. Like there's, yeah, you go to a lot of beautiful places in the world, but Hawaii just, there's, it's un, unmatched some points, uh, at some points. Absolutely. Um, so I was just, I do, I do layovers quite frequently to Hawaii because well, my, my girlfriend's Korean and she's got family out there. So we'll like go out there quite a bit. Oh, cool. I love Korea as, as well. If anybody's ever been to Korea or on the chat wants to go to Korea, like definitely recommend it. It's, yeah. it's a spot. Korea is dope. I got to go there once a long time ago, and I had such a great time. But again, I was younger, and it was oh, yeah. crazier. That was for sure. Yeah, like when you have a little bit more money and you're doing something, like yeah. I, it's 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 different. But yeah, it's not like it's not like I ever want to change myself. I am all, I always want to be who I am, no matter what happens in life, mm -hmm. and that that has to do with the people you surround yourself with and just the culture, you know. Yeah. Um. So what's up with Drape Face? <laughs> oh my god that is the best video ever <laughs> jason morrison does everybody know about all that like no syndicate do you want to hear about that story no, oh man no one knows any of that stuff jake uh, told me to say that to you on stream so let me, uh, hold on one second let me my laptop is not charging i'm not sure why it's not uh -oh. charging give me one second yeah here. yeah oh that's why my one one second team Hey, it's all good. There we go. We're back. Uh, hi, Jake. Yes, this is <laughs> going to be an amazing story here. So Jake and I, I have to like go back into my memory right now. Mm -hmm. Jake and I were traveling so much together, doing all of these events in Northern California. And for some stupid reason, Jake and I said, let's put as many stops on this little tour that we take to tire ourselves out. And that's basically what we did. And I think we did like six or seven stops in two days and had to basically drive to all these places. The video of the Weens and Fuegs show, I think it's Weens and Fuegs show Bay Area, it just shows all of these things. But in the middle of all of that, we were all enjoying some Japanese whiskey at a hotel that we were at, and Jason Morrison from Canal Syndicate comes over. That's what we'd usually do. We'd all get together, have some Japanese whiskey, talk some shit, play some Dama, stay up all night, and do it all over. Mm-hmm. So this particular night, we were all having a great time playing Kendama, drinking some whiskey. Next thing you know, I wanted to get up on the ledge and do some trick. And of course, Jake's going to film it. So the op what what my recollection is, he opens the drapes and I just do a, a spike. Just straight up, spin spike, no, like not, not even looking at it. And I do it just like this. And then Jason gets up there and he had a little bit too much whiskey and he just fucking pulls that drape down and you see it on his face. Me, Jake and Jason probably talk about this every year. We <laughs> screenshot that video and we're like, what's up drape face? <laughs> and he completely ripped the shades down like off of the screws. And we're all just sitting there a little bit buzzed drunk. We're like, fuck, we have to check out of this hotel at 10 a.m. tomorrow. What are we going to do? So... <laughs> We woke up the next morning, found a screwdriver. Jimmy rigged it, got the whole plating and the screws. Jason and I held it up while Jake freaking took the, took the screwdriver and drilled that bitch back in. <laughs> we checked it all, made sure it was good, acted like it never even happened. We still haven't told them. 
Oh my gosh, dude. Now that is a classic hotel Kadama story, bro. That is, and I, yeah. I remember you fools were feeling rough the next day for sure after that one too. Oh my goodness. Cause Jay and Jake brings it up and it brings up Jason. Cause he was part of the Kendama scene for like a couple of years and he was heavily yep. involved for a couple of years of the, he was like Kendama Depot before Kendama Depot kind of like he sold a lot of everybody's mm-hmm. stuff, didn't he? Right. Or did yeah. he have his own brand He's- too? He had his own brand, but he was also just the, he was like the Kendama dad of Northern California. He was opening up syndicates. He was doing a lot of stuff for the progression of what Kendama is. Yeah. And I've, and as we know, like influx of Kendama back in like 2015, it was just like up and down wherever the scene would go. And then, you know, it kind of tapered down and go to a new place. So Jason really uh, cultivated the kind of Northern California uh, Kendama scene. Aside from like San Francisco, but by like Milpitas and all those other places that were there, mm-hmm. he really helped bring kendamas to a play or kendama players to a place to be able to play kendama. You know, he had one store, he had a few of these other syndicates and a few of these other malls, and those were some of the best times. Like traveling around, being with Wyatt, being with Jake, just playing kendama up in Northern California. Yeah, and also Jason did the whole Jason. I'm not sure what happened with it, but I think he proposed or started the first like Dama bearing company, like Dama beads. Or mm. I don't even remember. We, it was like me, Wyatt, Jake, and somebody else were like sponsored by Dama. Is it Dama beads? Isn't, I can't remember. Isn't that what nuts was. though? That's before. Like it's that's tra- that was just a thing. That's, that's before. Since, <laughs> yeah, they that's just came on all beads. our Damas. Do I even have a beat? Look at that. Oh, yeah. That, like this thing. Yeah. Like yeah. that was before we had these. So we had to every single time take our kendama off, take this out, take the beat out, put the bearing on, and then put it in there. Sounds like a third world problem, but like, <laughs> hey, it was rough. I got delicate hands, man. I can't be tying knots. <laughs> Dude, Jake, Jake in chat says Jason is the reason we have bearing beads today. And like before Perfect. they were bearing beads, they were like, yeah, they do try to make a company because no one else had them. No one else could sell them. But then at some point, it just became the, like people just found them on the internet. And then once that happened, like the doors were off and everyone started putting on every Dama. And, um, but it did change Kendama. And that's crazy that you were sponsored by the first Barry Bead company yeah. <laughs> in Kendama. That, I remember that. That's a fun fact I was not uh, expecting to pull out of today's conversation. That's for sure. Dude. It was. <laughs> it was me, Wyatt. It was me, Wyatt Bray, Jake Weens, and I think somebody else. But I know for sure those three. Oh my gosh, that's so funny, dude. Okay, yeah. so well, no, I wanted to. I just want to because I don't want to take your whole day, but I want to talk about your life today and maybe like the uh, not the end, but like when you know start. Let's tell the, let's tell the story of when Kendama you know became less a part of your life, you know, and when you gave up your video editing and working for Kendama USA like to someone else, and obviously started your own company. Like, what was your transition like away from professional Kendama into real life? Yeah, absolutely. So. Kendama for me, I felt like I reached the pinnacle of what I could possibly do. Like I went on tour, I dropped a few pro models, I traveled all around the world. I just made a lasting impression on this on this this company and this place. And Kendama to me will always be a part of my life. Like I'm never not going to play Kendama. I will have a Kendama on me all the time. Mm-hmm. And the the big thing here was like, okay, I've I've reached this point. Like, what do I want to do with the rest of my life, or what do I want to do? Like. I had some design background. I had some photography. Like I went back to school a little bit. Oh, nice. And I was like, no, I'm going to, I dropped out of school because I was like, I have the ability to tell a story with my camera and people want me to shoot for them and pay me. And at this time I was like, I was dirt broke. I would like, didn't have any money. It wasn't because of Kendama. It was just like, that's what it was. I had other things that I had to do, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, what can I apply myself and figure something out? So I ended up getting a marketing internship at a watch company. Oh, and yeah. through that, through that company, I started to shoot photography for uh, products and lifestyle campaigns and started creative directing and all these things. And that's where I really started to understand the full breadth of a company. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to learn video, I'm going to learn photo, I'm going to learn studio, I'm going to learn creative direction, I'm going to learn all these things. 
So in that trial period, I just consumed all this information. And that was around, I did marketing internship for a few months. And then it led into me doing their photography in-house. Mm-hmm. And then it led into me doing their video in-house. And then it led to me just doing like six different roles. So I was doing like social Jeez. media management, photography, video, assistant, creative direction, whatever it was. And I was like, fuck this. Like, I should go start my own thing because I can do this for other companies. People want to work with me already. Fuck it. Let's take the leap of faith and do it. I made calculated risk and I'm ready to do it. Mm -hmm. That's when Make Ways Production started in 2021. I signed the paperwork. I got the LLC. I was kind of doing it low key because I was still, I was traveling still. I was like going to Mexico and I, I actually was like homeless for a second because I had to move out of my place and then my job thing and then my car got hit and I was just like, it was a mess. Wow. But I was like, I'm powering through this. I got this. I know exactly what I need to do. Yeah. And that's that's when I really started to put in the work to my my production company. I loved video. I loved photo. I loved telling a story through my visuals, through Kendama, through the clients that I've worked with. And that enabled me to understand that photos and videos only go so far. Mm-hmm. And I had experience doing branding initiatives. I'd been networking and traveling and meeting all these people and just trying to merge myself in this creative field in San Diego. One thing that everybody knows about me is I love to talk and I love to network. Mm-hmm. And that was the perfect opportunity for me in San Diego to put myself on the map in the creative space. Whatever I had to do, whatever I had to learn, I was going to do it. Yeah. Just like Kendama, I picked up a Kendama. I want to be really good at it. It's kind of the same effect. It's just a different phase of my life. Mm-hmm. So from there, over two years, I was trying to figure out the whole production company thing. I was traveling to Mexico. I was traveling to Seoul, Korea to do campaigns for different companies. And then I'd come back and try and manage things here and do all these things. And it's like, damn, I can't shoot. I can't edit. I can't travel. I can't do everything myself without like completely burning myself out. I have to expand. And I have to delegate to make myself grow as a person and as a company yeah so with that happening i had all this experience and i'm like okay why am i running a production company when i don't like to do it i don't like planning <laughs> i don't like i really don't like any of this to the extent that i thought so i was like yeah. okay let's pivot it was a, i wouldn't say it was a failure it was a learning curve it was a learning lesson to where i'm at now yeah so with that being said i started shooting jewelry i started shooting uh like fashion stuff. I started shooting hats. I started shooting merch. I started shooting all this cool sh- like fashion stuff. You know me. I've always been about fashion. I love, you know, fashion in general. Yeah. And that's when the agency's talk started coming because I was like, oh, we're doing branding initiatives here. We're doing this, that. And that's where Make Waves Agency came about. And that was eight months. That was 2021 into 2022. And eight months of my life, I rebranded my whole website i worked with a developer and designer to rebrand everything and that's what make waves is today make waves is a is a creative agency growth company founded by founders because we've been in the same positions as other d2c companies just like you matt like you probably go through shit on a day-to-day basis in a d2c space through your email marketing through your retention funnels through your acquisition paid like all that stuff mm-hmm. that's where we come in and we actually come in to help you and grow your business in that sense I didn't know any of this three months ago. I literally took a crash course in email marketing the last three months because we brought on a nine figure brand and took over their whole retention funnel Jeez. and made them five five hundred thousand dollars in thirty days. Let's go. So my whole like life is put me right in this place right now to be here. And it's just like the fact that we're having this conversation is just crazy to me because all the experience I had with Kendama, all the travels, not one piece I will ever forget because it's who I am today. Yeah, dude, it's it's so sick. You were on my top of my list of people. In the new year, my goal was to have an interview each week with someone that like uh, shaped Kendama or someone that like meant something to me in like my Kendama life. And uh, you're just someone who I feel like I don't keep in touch with enough, like along with a lot of other Kendama people, to be honest. But uh, that's why I was really excited to just see where you're at and see where Make Waves has come because I've I've seen all the phases and this latest phase is really cool to hear because it's a space I am in a lot. And like in the background of suites, we do all of that stuff, uh, not at the extent that you are, but that's so sick that you have like made – made a company that people that have that kind of income are are coming to you for help that is a that's got to feel really great and that's got to feel very validating to that jump you took off that cliff uh, in 2021 you know that's pretty sick absolutely yeah it was 
it was it felt like i was running on a treadmill for a really long time mm -hmm. and i'm still growing as a person like right now i'm i'm learning how to adapt to my new role uh in this company but also i'm loving every second of it i'm doing exactly what i wanted to do and i can see my work come out with the team members that i currently have under make waves and it's just really cool to, to see that and i don't know if you guys know any of these brands but like built basics is somebody that we're working with they're cool. like a basic company premium basics company uh two classics one um one i've kind of kept under the radar a little bit is like yeezy so that one's like pretty cool with me yeah um but other than that like we're just doing we're doing really cool things and working with really cool brands and it's just it's I'm shocked that I'm here, but also <laughs> I understand why I'm here too. Yeah. And like without everybody in the Kandami community, like I would not be here at all. So whoever's in here, like huge shout out and all the Pascanal players. And I see a lot of stuff still. And I love seeing these new tricks and everything like that. So continue to keep pushing because I'm here for it all. And Kandami will live inside me for the rest of my life. Ah, oh, dude. Well, I, I appreciate you a lot coming on the stream today and, and taking some time to kick it with us because uh, you do mean a lot to a lot of people in the chat. I've been I've been skimming it as we go, and there's a lot of homies who uh, aren't usually in the stream who are here today just to say what up to you because I think, <laughs> uh, you know, there's uh, Kendama's getting far enough away from when we started that there is just a back in the day, and uh, we are part of that. You are a solid part of the back in the day of Kendama, and uh i love it look at oh and he still knows how to shred he don't know it don't matter dude he still rips um we do giveaways at the end of every show is there anything special that you would like to give away to our wonderful viewers oh he does have one just this is a this is the v2 20 2018 pro model you can't i don't know if you can really ever get this anywhere but uh this should go to somebody that really appreciates it and whatever I need to do, sign it, write a note, uh, I got you. So we're giving this away. Yeah, dude, please, I think, sign it. And then I'll uh, I'll hit you up after on Discord for the giveaway for sure. Um, awesome. Dude, uh, <laughs> Ken Garden wants to know, does Make Waves do babysitting in the Chicago area? <laughs> <laughs> I will be thinking about starting up a business in 2024. I'll let you know, Jake. <laughs> dude, yeah. Owen, will, he'll come home and Owen will have like slick back hair and just be flossing. It'll be hilarious, dude. Um, I'll make sure he has <laughs> golden abs and everything. <laughs> oh, dude. TJ, it was so uh, nice reconnecting with you, brother. Uh, keep on grinding, Kendama. Keep on grinding your business, dude. And uh, we'll see you soon, hey? Maybe at the you. next Love Kendama. Me, and maybe at the next Kendama event, dude. Maybe we see you in person, Nako this year or something. That'd be You'll, sick. You'll see me. Don't worry. I'll be out. <laughs> oh, let's go, You'll dude. See. All right, brother. I appreciate you, Matt. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, dude. Have a good rest Cheers. of the day. Bye. Later. Cheers. Yo, thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the interview with TJ. It was so nice catching up. If you enjoyed that one, go check out another one of our interviews or go and learn a new trick. If you want to watch it live, we're live every Wednesday at 1 p.m. See you guys there.